Tonight, documents show Silo Harner, the son, and former Johnson County Sheriff Charles Harner had a blood alcohol level of more than two and a half times the legal limit when he was involved in a deadly accident. We have the latest next. Plus, just days after the April ballot order was finalized for Marion Mayor, one candidate and a city commissioner were challenged on their residences. We have more coming up. Plus, SIU Carbondale's aviation programs will be upgrading their teaching fleet with over $2 million in new aircraft. We have those stories and more tonight on the Friday Night Edition of News 24 at 10. And good evening. Thanks for joining us. We have a lot of news to get to, but we begin tonight in Vienna, where documents show Sil Harner, the son of former Johnson County Sheriff Charles Harner, had a blood alcohol level of more than two and a half times the legal limit when he was involved in a deadly accident. Police arrested Harner earlier this week on charges of reckless homicide and aggravated DUI. On March 22nd, Special Prosecutor Edwin Parkinson said Sile Harner got behind the wheel of a pickup truck with two others after a night of drinking. That decision resulted in the death of Troy Newman and severe injuries to both Harner and Tyler Inman. Parkinson filed charges against Harner on Wednesday, but why did it take so long? Johnson County State's Attorney Tambra Kane stepped away from the case in July due to possible conflicts of interest. Harner is the son of Johnson County's sheriff at the time of the crash and was a deputy with the department as well. A judge then assigned Parkinson to the case. He said he waited until Illinois State Police finished its investigation into the crash before filing charges. Investigators finished their report in November. The criminal complaint said Harner was going 93 miles per hour when he failed to negotiate a curve on Old Route 146 and his blood alcohol level was 220. Harner is also the subject of a lawsuit because of the crash. The other survivor, Tyler Inman, is suing Harner and the bar they were drinking at that night, Big Boys Bar and Grill in Vienna. Inman said both were responsible for the injuries he suffered in the crash. Attorneys for Harner and the bar deny that claim. Harner's first court appearance for his criminal case is scheduled for January 4th. To the weather, where more cold temperatures are on the way, here's Terry Ann with the latest. All right, thanks, Terry. Turning to Marion tonight, where just days after the, after the April ballot order was finalized for Marion mayor, one candidate and a city council commissioner were challenged on their residences. 
The city held two objection meetings today, voting on rules and officers to handle those objections. Mayoral candidate Dennis Ball and city commissioner candidate Jason Powell are facing objection letters sent in by Marion residents. One resident sent two separate letters to the city, one for Ball and another for Powell, saying they do not have proof of residency for a full year before the election. Another resident filed a second complaint concerning Powell's residency, saying his water service from the city only dates back to June 13th. And according to the Illinois State Board of Elections, a candidate for mayor or commissioner must reside in his or her municipality one year before the election. A second hearing is set for Wednesday, January 2nd at 1 p.m. for Powell and 1.30 p.m. for Ball. The residents who filed the objection letters must be present in order for the letter to be valid. Then Ball and Powell will have to show evidence and give a testimony before the hearing committee decides if the candidate should remain on the April ballot. Labor attorney for the city of Marion, Rhett Bark, will be at the hearing will be the hearing officer, and Gail West has been appointed hearing clerk for both committees. City Commissioner Angelo Hightower, Marion Mayor Anthony Ranella, and City Clerk Alice Ricks will be on the board to decide if Powell stays on the ballot. City Commissioner Jim Webb, John Goss, and City Clerk Alice Ricks will be on the board to decide if Ball will stay a mayoral candidate. SIU Carbondale's aviation programs will be upgrading their teaching fleet with over $2 million in new aircraft. The university has approved the purchase of five new Cessna 172 planes, which will, which will replace eight older aircraft that are becoming outdated and expensive to maintain. The aviation programs have been planning the $2,139,000 purchase for multiple years. New numbers from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund show the number of line-of-duty deaths increased 12% from 2017 to 2018. In all, 144 officers line, died in the line of duty in 2018 across the nation, compared to 129 line-of-duty deaths since 2017. We'll have more on this story and how it affected Illinois tomorrow morning. Turning to Heron tonight, where residents will no longer have to drive out of town for a beef and cheddar sandwich. Today, city leaders and Arby's workers celebrated the grand opening of the restaurant with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Mayor Steve Fertini says he's happy the fast food chain is now a part of his community. He explains that residents have been anticipating the fast food chain being available in their neighborhood and it will keep money locally. Ty Pollock, Senior Director of Operations for Arby's Midwest Region, says it took crews about 90 days to build the 2,400 square foot building, but plans have been in the works for about a decade. Now 40 locals are employed at that restaurant. The chain is already doing its chair to give back. The first 50 customers in line were given a voucher for a free meal per week for all of 2019. The restaurant will also be giving back to local students. Pollock says for the first 30 days, proceeds from kids' meals will be collected and at least $2,500 will be donated to the Heron Elementary School. The dining room will be open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, and the drive through will be open from 10 a.m. to midnight. Much more local news, sports, and weather is coming up next, but first, here's the latest in national news in your Fox News update. In Fox News... Ending a massive manhunt, I'm Rich Dennison, Fox News. Police in California arresting a man they believe shot and killed a police officer on Wednesday. The suspect was apprehended in an area to the south of where the shooting took place in Newman, California. 
law enforcement had been able to release pictures of not only the suspect but his vehicle taken from surveillance footage of a nearby convenience store his truck had been found outside of a mobile home park in the same town where he shot corporal ron l saying the stanislaus county sheriff wouldn't immediately release the suspect's name after the shooting but said he was here in the country illegally corporal singh was a legal immigrant from fiji he leaves behind a wife and a five-month-old boy fox's jessica rosenthal in los angeles the partial government shutdown will drag through the weekend and most likely well into the new year lawmakers have been a rare sight this week at the capitol very few on hand for quick pro forma sessions in the house and senate that last only a couple of minutes apiece the white house is house democrats led by nancy pelosi walked away from negotiations Democrats say they've made good faith offers to boost border security funding, but will not allocate any money for a wall. On Twitter, the president threatened to close the U.S.-Mexico border without a wall and cut off aid to Central American countries where migrants have fled. Fox's Jared Halpern on Capitol Hill. Severe weather reported across the country. Treacherous driving conditions with blizzards in the upper Midwest blamed on at least three deaths. Sub-zero temperatures expected in Minnesota following a heavy snowfall. With most of Minnesota being in at least the negative single digits for wind chills overnight. National Weather Service meteorologist Tyler Hazenstein. Flash flooding is a concern in the nation's south and southeast where dozens of high water rescues have taken place after some areas were hit with more than a foot of rain. More than a thousand flights were canceled across the country because of the severe weather. This is Fox News. Stop. Energizer is now a Guinness World Records holder for longest lasting double A battery. Play the longest with Energizer. I did not know what we were truly getting into. Nature, untouched, untapped, beauty. It's a very poor village. The floor was dirt. Going to Costa Rica it has made me a better nurse. I could walk up and grab this plant and go home and make this treatment. There's so much more work to be done. I wanted to serve. I wanted to help other people. It was important for me to do something bigger than myself. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Arby's wouldn't put just any type of meat on a chicken sandwich. So why would we put any type of beer in a beer can chicken sandwich? Trick question. We wouldn't. Arby's, we have the meat. Crunchy Fritos, warm chili, melty cheese, all together for 99 cents. Like real comfort food. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone and these guys keep pulling me back in. Pulling me back in. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos, chili cheese, fave, starting at 99 cents. Ending soon. Save on thousands of clearance items this week at Target. Save 50% on apparel. Up to 50% on home. And up to 50% on beauty. And more. Only at Target. I finally did it. Popeye's new chicken sandwich. Mm. I've been trying to make the perfect chicken sandwich forever. Uh, how does that make you feel? You know me. It had to be just right. Mm. Finding a bun as good as my chicken was not easy. Mm. I mean, I did it, obviously. I think we've made a lot of progress here. I feel great. Good talk. Mmm. I'm proud of you. My new chicken sandwich is buttermilk battered and served on toasted brioche. Try it spicy or classic. Now that chicken to Popeye's. That's looking good. Nice and cold refreshment. Piping hot with robust flavor and aroma. Any size, just one dollar at McDonald's. Oh yeah, that's looking real good. A brand new year. Time for new resolutions and planning for the year ahead. And this year, we're changing for the better. Investing in newer technology to provide the news to you even faster. And with Local Now, you can stream today's top headlines 24-7. Alexa can help you find local headlines. And this year, we're in the air, Stop. providing you with real-time coverage straight from the news. Hmm. Hello. Another year is Stop. upon us. We are and will always be.
All right, thanks, Terry. Turning back to Marion tonight, where some sidewalks in Marion are getting a facelift, and soon new sidewalks and a crosswalk will be added to help keep residents safe. Winter might be a slower time for some, but for the city of Marion's street department, it's the perfect time to fix sidewalks. Currently, crews are working on East Boulevard Street, fixing cracked and uneven concrete. Phillips says the city has a sidewalk program that allows them to number the sidewalks in order based on necessity. City Commissioner John Goss says some of the sidewalks are more than 100 years old. Within the next six months, Goss says residents will see a sidewalk being built along Halfway Road from the pilot truck stop to Main Street. And in the next two years, a sidewalk and a crosswalk will be built along Route 13 between State and Fair Street. Goss says over the past eight years, the city has replaced more than 12 miles of sidewalk. Phillips encourages residents to call the city if they need a sidewalk fixed or looked at. To report a damaged sidewalk, you can call the City of Marion at 618-997-6281. And for all these stories and more, you can visit our website, www.news24si.com, or our new website, starting at the beginning of the new year, www.siln24.com. We'll have much more news, sports, and weather on the way. You're listening to News 24 at 10.